Welcome to the Tuesday Review. I'm Nathan, as always, joined by James in the studio. How are you going, James? Not bad. Not bad. Callum can't be here, unfortunately, due to work commitments. Yeah, we're so. back. We didn't make it last week. We almost didn't make it this week. I thought week. I had COVID last week, man. Yeah. I was dying. Friday uh, Friday and Saturday, I was at work. Thinking, oh, I just have allergies, you know, sniffles, like maybe there's hay fever in the, you know. It's, yeah. It was kind of breezy, sunny. I'm like, it's probably just allergies. Yeah. Sunday morning, I woke up thinking I was dying. Yeah, I, like... Yeah, because you explain the symptoms. I'm like, definitely sounded like COVID, oh, but you like, probably just had the flu. I think I probably did just have the flu because I tested negative like every day. Yeah. And I still feel like I can still kind of hear it in my voice. Like I but haven't quite recovered in the nasal you, department. You've also had COVID, so it could be like um, if you got the flu, then you've got like the long COVID and it's like worsening. Does maybe, that? I don't maybe. know. I don't know anything about the science yeah. of it, but that makes sense to me. Yeah, it could be. But anyway, yeah, we almost did, mate. My car got smashed, so I was like, I don't know it's if season, I can come. It's a season, a season for <laughs> yeah. suffering. And then Callum gets screwed at work. Yeah. So. And uh, poor Alum's in India at the moment, not yeah. feeling too hot as well. He wants to come home. Like, yeah. everyone's not having a good time. If you're listening, Alan, we hope you get better soon. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, <laughs> yeah, we're which, here. Yeah, we made it. Yeah. Um, Somehow we're here. Yeah, which I mean ties into my point. Like I think we were talking about a couple of weeks ago, where I'm like, it's too, it's it's getting to a point now where it's like we've got so much stuff going on, and there's so many unexpected things that just if each week we'll just kind of wing it and yeah, and see how. And if there's a really big movie, yeah, we'll talk about that. But other than that, we're just going to all chill and talk about whatever yeah. we, we've well, been watching. And I, I wanted to start on something a bit more interesting recently because I'm um, last year I bought I bought a car off um, you know a friend of the show Alan, mm -hmm. and his car doesn't have Bluetooth. It's just CDs. Yeah, and I got the little Kmart Bluetooth unit that is not very good, right? You know, you tune it to the FM frequency and it's static. Yeah. And, terrible it's always crackly so yeah. i went through some of my I put some of my cds in a, in a cd case for the car but it's like it's not the kind of music that i always want to listen to yeah so like we're big fans of like synth wave kind of dual hop vapor yeah. wave yeah in the studio but you can't really get that on cd right yeah and there's a very interesting kind of i guess we'll call it underground scene mm. uh the an artist specifically called macro blank Right, I'm and write that they're down. not on, they're on YouTube so and up. Bandcamp. Yeah. Um, and I guess it's a, I don't know, their motto is everything is stolen, um, everything is plundered, whatever. So mm. I, I'm guessing that there's no, we'll say there's no sample clearance, I'd say. So you, you can't really sell Okay, it. yeah. And you can get his entire discography on, on their end, I don't know if it's a man or a woman, Um on Bandcamp for like what pay what you want or whatever it's okay. basically free yeah so I ended up burning a few of those CDs for use in the car having yeah. legally purchased them alright <laughs> so I'm not doing anything wrong well, for our listeners yeah if, yeah if the if the um, music itself is questionably in a grey yes, area then <laughs> but that could just be marketing I don't officially know that right yeah yeah um, and I'm like, why isn't there more, you know, like there's, there's a big, there's a massive market for this type of music. And I guess it's just, is it because sample was hard to get clearance and it costs too much to look too clear? I'm no, I'm no expert. So, you know, don't, don't take my word for it, but the internet is gigantic and the music, there are so much music scenes and stuff that I don't even know about. And I, with stuff like Bandcamp and YouTube, like there's just people making stuff and remixing stuff and doing weird stuff. That's true. That you can find, if you look hard enough, you could find anything. It's just, yeah, in terms of commercial availability, CDs and stuff like that, that's, yeah, that's going into a different territory where you need kind of press and money and... That's true. Whatever. Um, I say all that, but there's also a ton of other music on, like, Vaporweather, aesthetic kind of music. On oh, it's music. a big, yeah, it's a big subgenre. Um, but w what I appreciate... You know what I like? <laughs> like, <laughs> uh, unironically, have you heard of, like, Simpsons Chill Wave? Like, I can't remember what the name is. It's, it's like, like a YouTube Simpsons channel? Wave. I, it's like a subgenre of that kind of crunchy, wa like, synth yeah. wave, but they use, like, Simpsons samples <laughs> it's legit good and there's like a seinfeld one and there's a zelda one that's really good i'll send you that yeah i'm gonna have to look up where yeah they kind of re remix 
like using samples from those things and the simpsons one especially is like more of a meme but legit there's some real good ones. yes <laughs> <laughs> i love it <laughs> Anyway, what I was um, I'm all saying all this to get to a point is that I recently rediscovered that unlike other sort of streaming services, Apple Music lets you upload your own CDs to Apple Music in quotes. Obviously, it's not going to be seen to anyone else but you because it's your music. Mm. But now I can stream it through Apple Music as if it's on their own streaming service. Well, it's kind of like what you used to do with iTunes, right? Yeah, except it's we, built into Apple Music and I can upload it to the cloud. I guess, does it. iTunes even exist? Is is Apple Music just the new version of iTunes? Kind of, yeah. Like iTunes is only an app on the computer that basically mm. links into Apple Music, essentially. Mm. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so I, you know, all this music that I would like but is not available on my streaming services that I pay for is now available on my streaming service in a roundabout way. Well, that that makes sense. I like. I mean, that's a good thing yeah. because there's there's a lot of blind spots when it comes to Spotify or whatever where you, it's not not they've got a lot of stuff but not everything. I mean, there's also a, look. There'll be a period of music where, especially in, we'll say like reggae, dub, mm. kind of, or more or the other obscure areas of music where rights have been lost and mm. it's kind of, everything's kind of by the wayside, companies go bankrupt. Yeah. And there's just, like my dad has vinyls that don't you exist on the get, internet. Yeah. And it's well, all it's like, like... It's like mo- when we talk about movies and video games, it's like there's just stuff you can't get anymore. Yeah, yeah exactly. Because of rights or whatever. Yeah, like I was watching last night in specifically movies i guess we'll transition into movies mm. on that i watched my one of my favorite movies of all time yesterday in hd i can only watch on streaming i can't get it on blu-ray mm. role models isn't that really some blue i remember we talked at least about not this in once australia. off there. at least not in australia it's i'm not- gonna look it up now because i'm pretty sure it would be available but, oh it's very hard to get mm. and i was watching it on amazon prime and i looked spectacular <laughs> I yeah. was like, I want this. I want this in my life. Because it's a movie I probably watch at least twice a year. We t- I remember we talked about it off air because it's been so... L- yeah, it's definitely available. Uh, Maybe just didn't get a wide release here. But um, it's definitely something that I would enjoy. But um, Yeah, I mean, like, since you're such a big fan of it. Yeah, it was released in Australia, US, Canada, Germany. I've only ever seen it on DVD. No, it's definitely... I, I mean, it's... You know, Maybe 10, been out 10 of print 13 years ago. Yeah. But I'm sure, like, I'm going to go on eBay right now. I bet you I could find one for a decent if enough price. Probably. But, um, yeah, no, there are movies where, I mean, they're not available at all. At all but in this case, it's like so- something that's been out of print for almost 15 years. Um, Yeah, six bucks. On Blu-ray? Yeah. That's all right. Oh, six pl- plus three dollars postage. Eight bucks. That's not bad. You know, eight, I'll have to, I'll have nine. To <laughs> yeah, so it's not impossible. But yeah, I understand your point. It's just like, especially for like, for film nerds like us, it's like, or or um, I should say for Blu-ray collectors, like, yeah, obviously yeah. it's, but for people who might not be interested in that, like some stuff's not available on streaming, it's only available physically. Some stuff's not physically, it's only streaming yeah there's a um, whole graveyard of movies that have been remastered and released in high definition or 4k but not on that disc. annoys me the most <laughs> yeah especially when it's different versions of films so like for instance have you seen the western tombstone it's awesome no yeah it's really good but the the director's the the theatrical version is available on blu-ray but the director's like extended cut is only available on DVD. But I know for a fact that on streaming there is a HD version of the director's extended cut. So why? Yeah. And I know there are rights issues. There's different rights between a theatrical version and extended version. That's why sometimes they don't release them like together or whatever. But it's so annoying when you know some, and it's especially even more annoying. When it's just like a a movie on Disney Plus that's been remastered in 4K, 
And it's just like, there's no physical version. And it's like, hang on. Yeah. We know you have the master tape, the master, you know, the film, the negative. It didn't come out of nowhere. Yeah, yeah, it didn't come out of nowhere. It can't look that good <laughs> yeah. without you doing some work to it. W- why not? And look, I, again, like, I haven't watched the Blu-ray role models, but the version they have on Amazon Prime was probably the best I've ever seen. I've seen it on streaming, on Netflix, and everywhere else. Yeah. But I don't know what... I don't know if there's been a change, or it's just the... I guess um, it's, it's less new... compressed. That's the other thing. If if the Blu-ray is from 10 plus years ago, is that stream using that same HD master, or is there a newer master yeah. out there that hasn't well, been put on a disc that's, yet? That's my ultimate question. I've seen this movie on Netflix and other stuff in HD before, but specifically the version right now on Amazon Prime looks spectacular. Mm. Like you can tell, you know, when you can tell, when you've seen like a new master of a movie and you're just like, I'm seeing details I've never seen before. Well, it's also, it's, is it also because like probably the last time you watched it was on your old TV or on DVD? No, no, no. no. I told you, I watch it twice a year. It's all usually available on some streaming sites. Yeah, yeah. I only have to pull out the DVD if I'm desperate. (laughs) (laughs) I wouldn't normally watch DVD. (laughs) I'm not an animal. (laughs) um, Is there an extended version of Raw There there is, but I've never seen it. Oh, yeah. Look, there's like right there. It's Blu-ray on eBay, $6, you know, plus postage. Is that new or used? Extended used but yeah. you know if the most of them are decent most of them enough are used. the amazon's taking the piss though they range us from 42.90 to 71 bucks on amazon for the blu-ray oh no nah. oh yeah yeah Ugh. no that's that's for probably for new you know it's because yeah. it's out of print they um yeah but yeah just if you just go on ebay but actually this is i mean i guess since we're talking about it um it's a good point always check before if if there is any collectors out there always check how like what different versions are available because i know i've done this and i know nathan we were talking about this a couple months ago you buy a version of the blu-ray and you know you'll feel so happy and you'll unwrap the plastic the halloween problem (laughs) yes stick it in the player and be like this is the best day of my life and then you know, I'll come over <laughs> and I'll be like, mm, actually. Yeah. <laughs> I remember that happened when we watched Halloween. We, was it 1080i? Or yeah, was it, yeah, that, that was years like ago. That. Callum, yeah. Callum buys this Blu-ray of Halloween. He's like, yeah, boys, let's watch Halloween on the projector. Yeah. I don't even know if we had the you had no, the projector I, at that time. It, it was I years ago. Did, no, I think we did, but it was it was we had a just ghetto projector. It. it was the one off Wish dot com. Maybe with the, just like the, yeah. the tarp we pulled it, over the garage it, door. It, it, yeah, it was ages ago, and, and Callum was so excited. He's like, "Yeah, let's watch Halloween." And I think we watched it on around Halloween. I can't remember. Um, and, and it and, looked terrible. Yeah, no, yeah. it looked fine. But he, I remember, he pulled out the case, <laughs> and as soon as I saw the case, I didn't even have to read it. I'm like, Callum, I have that edition. It's the 1080i one. I'm like, I had to upgrade to the 1080p one. There is a difference. Don't let people tell you there's not. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Progressive over interlaced. Oh, please. yeah. Never. Yeah. Or if you can find... And that's that's what I was saying. If you're... If, if, you, if you just casually, occasionally buy a Blu-ray, probably not a big deal. But if you actually want the best version, you don't want to have to keep upgrading and you... Yeah, you, you, you're better off just doing a quick Google. You can go on Blu-ray.com. There's a website called DVD Compare um, that I use all the time of like, it's easy just to see what different versions are out there um, because you might buy a version be like, yeah, this is great. And then find out that in the US, there's an extended version of the movie or just a better or, disc or a better, you know, a better remaster or a version with more special features, which that's another thing, especially in Australia, oftentimes we'll get like no special features on our disc and you look at the US version and it's full of special features. And I guess it's just some sort of rights issue. And that's a really annoying, especially for someone like me who loves watching the special features. So I often have to import, you know, stuff from overseas, even if it's available here, just because it's the better version. And you know what? A lot of the time, it's more expensive or as expensive. Sometimes it's cheaper. Yeah. So it pays. It pays to shop around. Because basically, I, I guess the like the first version you might find if it's an earlier one, 
what would be more expensive just because it's maybe rarer and out of print versus a new remaster? That's yeah, sort of sometimes. It de- really depends. Like, And sometimes you'll find a version that's like the old out of print um, copy and but it has like one extra special feature than the new release version um and so for someone like me i'm like oh, i'll get i'll try to find the older version and that might cost more and take take longer to find but in the end you have the more complete version yeah. now obviously if the new version is lacking that special feature but has a better remaster then do you get both this is the dilemma. <laughs> That's the this James is, This is yeah. my problem. This See, is I'm why not that I'm broke. Hardcore. I'd probably just buy the better looking one and be like, yeah. whatever, I can YouTube well, special that, features. Well, that's the thing. <laughs> a, lot of, a lot of people just want the best looking version. Okay, that's fine. But I'm like, if you want the complete package... Yeah, you need all the special features and documentaries yeah. and stuff. That's why like, I, I like to get the you know the limited edition releases because it's got all the art cards and the, the special features disc and the soundtrack CD. And even though it costs more, I... I won't feel the need that I, I don't. I won't feel FOMO for you know the, a more complete version, and especially for films I love, I'll often buy multiple versions to have. Um, you know what I would love mm. right now? Like it doesn't exist, but I would love to buy. Have you seen In Search of Darkness? I haven't seen uh, the whole thing. Uh, there's more than one. There's three parts. Yeah. The um, first part, I think, is like early horror. It goes up from like the... Oh, I don't know, it's early horror up until like the 70s. Yeah. And then parts two and three are the 80s. Mm. When, when it starts really getting into gear. Yeah. Um, and I would love to have those in like a Blu-ray box set. I think for the, of, they had page, they had like a pay, uh, Kickstarter or something where <sighs> if you... If you um, contributed then you, you would get a physical it. copy but i don't know if they actually sell physical copies. they, they don't again sure like we could don't. probably google it and find maybe if they have a website they might be able to, you might be able to special order it but it's not something that's easily available i guess no that that that's that's even a more of a specific example yeah. of like a super indie like yeah it's available on Shutter for listeners. Yeah, um, but that that's AMC Plus. Yeah, that that's like a case of like these. Well, I mean, I don't know how exactly it was made, but it was like a couple, of, like a guy or two, uh, like cobbling together footage of eighties horror it's, movies, basically. It's yeah, it's um, a documentary talking to people like actors and film directors of the movies at the time. It's supposed to be like a, a, it's com- like an, a complete yeah. chronicle of, of movie horror. Yeah. Yeah. And um, so they're like five hours each. Yeah. Each part That's is like amazing. five hours, and it's, it goes through every you know yeah. big was, movie horror watch- movie or I was watching, little think, lot not known horror movie. I was watching part three with my mum, which is like the lesser known horror movies of the eighties. Part two is like all the big ones. Yeah, and I'm watching part three, and she's like, "I'm disgusted, but I'm also just absorbed because <laughs> it's like it goes through year by year." Yeah. And every now and again, I'd be like, I remember that movie. And then it'd be like a really horrific gore scene. And she'd be like, that's disgusting. Turn it off. And I'm like, no, but I'm watching. <laughs> it's informational. It's informational. That's it. We're learning about horror movies that I should buy. <laughs> but I watched I watched that recently. That's very good. Um, very good. And it's it's almost like, you know, there's coffee table books. I feel like that's a coffee yeah. table movie. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's a, a, coffee it's table, a documentary. Call it, yeah. a, call it a series. Because it's like almost yeah, like I know what you mean. Bite size, but yeah, a movie yeah. about movies, like a, like a documentary about movies, it's, and it's almost a good coffee table. Like you put it on with the boys and just like yeah. kind of you know laugh about it. It's also yeah, it's also like um, like you know like you like a YouTube compilation or something of of yeah. like pe- people like to like to experience uh, you know like. It's like everything, like a collage. Yeah, it's exactly. It's like everything you yeah. love, like, stay stitched together. And it's like the main scenes and the main kills and whatever. Yeah. Um, there are whole YouTube channels dedicated to this. But this is like a five-hour documentary oh, about all the, up the like entire... Hours, yeah. yeah. It's crazy. And I think they did a sci-fi one as well. I can't remember what it's Ooh, called. I um, that up. That's cool. Yeah. But, um, yeah, so that's I've seen that. But um, off air, me and James are also talking about our desperate desire for a beefy Plex server. Because this is the problem also I've been having. Yeah. Is, and I'm sure it's much worse for yourself. But when you buy so many movies, you forget what you have to an extent. I know you have yours written down I, in the catalog. 
I actually I started a catalog and I just had to give up. <laughs> yeah. um, I've kept meaning to because I know there are apps you can do where you can scan barcodes yeah. and automatically adds what you have yeah. to a list. I gave up. Um, I especially the older I get, um, like my memory gets worse and worse, and it's gotten pretty bad recently. That's the COVID. But I never got it. <laughs> or did you? <laughs> or did I? Yeah, maybe. Don't I worry, did. we will have no. The I think here. yeah, I think it's for another reason which I won't go into. But like. I, I'm surprisingly actually pretty good at remembering what I have, even if it's like under my bed from 10 years ago. It's, I'm terrible, man. I, do you, I even recent, recent, relatively recently, I was like, hey, James, you want Casablanca on yeah. 4K? Uh, I'm and like, I'm like, also, and, you, and you were like, I've already got it, but so do you. And I'm like, okay, thanks, yeah. James. But also, <laughs> I was going to, like, because I didn't want to be passive aggressive, and you can't be, you can't convey tone, like, jokingly. I didn't want to be mean, but I was like, you don't know me at all. Casablanca, <laughs> yeah, no, I yeah. pre-ordered the limited edition <laughs> like months ago. <laughs> no, yeah. yeah, but yeah, you have to... Um, if you are a collector like I am, you have to be invested in the collecting aspect. You know, like you have to... Cu- curation, I think, is a word I've used once before. Yeah. So, like, oh, look, I've done that. I've got movies on the shelf that I guess I'd, I'd like to watch more in the more n- near term versus the longer yeah. term, which are in store. Yeah, if you, like, what but, I do, if I watch something, then I move it all the way to the back shelf and the back corner yeah. in my in my wardrobe uh, that no one's going to see for but a then while. then the problem is I'll see a movie on streaming or something like that, and I'll be like, I want to watch that, but I already have the Blu-ray. What am I doing? Like, you know what I mean? Like Yeah, well, that that's that that's my thing as well. Is like, I don't really watch movies on streaming unless they're originals and I can't get them physically or I don't want them physically or whatever. Um, yeah, because, like, I have so much on physical media that it's just, like, you know, I've got all these movies saved in my Netflix queue and it's like, if I go through all them, I'm never going to watch the physical yeah. stuff. And, and like I said, I like uh, special features, so... I think that's the struggle we're both having at the moment, is when your collection gets so big, it's like, if I had just invested the money and had a Plex server, I could rip all my discs to it and watch them at home mm. in the nice, easy streaming. Oh, yeah. Streaming like, is definitely more convenient. Like, I, I, don't, I won't argue with that. I oh, know, and I could also rip... If it's not a movie that I feel like, it's not The Godfather. Like, I don't have to yeah, watch yeah. it on the disc. I don't have to... You know, like, if it's something... The quality that, doesn't have to be... The quality doesn't have to be amazing. I could still have a five gigabyte like, mm. file that still looks really nice. Um, I could have my own streaming service. I've got yeah. enough discs. You know mm. what I mean? I don't have to be paying hundreds of dollars... For stream, yeah. streaming when I could do it myself. Well, so I mean, that's, we're, we're looking at options like that at the moment. And I know James yeah. is in a similar boat, but it's like, it's too much at the moment. So like I recently canceled Binge and I'm trying binge's, to... Binge is, the quality is so bad. It's so bad. I, I held off getting Binge for so long and I, I eventually broke down and got it. And the catalog is worth it. The HBO and Warner Brothers stuff is worth it. Then the whole HBO Max drama happened and they started deleting stuff and who knows what will happen here with Binge. But, um, yeah, I was just like, just the quality of the stream is not It's not good. They have good. The, It's terrible and they hate their customers. Like the official, yeah. the official company response, about, when I inquired about this when Binge first launched, yeah. they, the official company response to me over Twitter was 4K is reserved for our Foxtel customers. I'm like, this isn't we 1995. Yeah. We, we, yeah. we talked about it when Binge started yeah. a, a couple of years ago, whenever it was, and we knew, and Nathan was like, this is definitely what's happening. He's like, I, I, he, you know, I remember well, you It was I Game of Thrones, said, and it was like, watch Game of Thrones in 4K on Showtime, yeah. whatever it was, but HD no, on, on Binge. Yeah, on, on Foxtel, yeah, but I remember you- On 4K, yeah. Yeah, on, I remember um, you, you said, I'm like, you said, I don't have the evidence, but this is definitely what's happening, and it definitely was what was happening is HBO Max came out in the US, Foxtel was trying, you know, the the dinosaur that it is, still has a stranglehold on a lot of Australian media, Um, and streaming was, you know, so big, they had no choice but to finally get into the streaming market by introducing Binge, and they deliberately made it garbage so that 
people would still... It was a box ticked. Use the least resources yeah. as possible to satisfy HBO so yeah. HBO wouldn't cancel yeah. the contract at the end. Because the other thing about that theory was HBO's deal with Foxtel was nearly up. Yeah. And HBO, uh, my our opinion in the studio, not verified by any evidence, mm-hmm. just an opinion, was that there was probably HBO said to Foxtel, hey, guys, we want to be a streaming presence. If you can't offer us this, mm. this is what we want in our product. Yeah. We'll launch in Australia separately. That's, yeah. And that's, of course, that's Fox, I remember when we talked, that's what we talked about. And I don't yeah. think Foxtel could survive without yeah. HBO. So there's like, they crapped yeah. out binge in a couple of days and they're like, yeah, here, you happy? <laughs> yeah. And for so long, I was like, I don't want to reward them. I don't want to give them my money, you know. But eventually, I broke down. I'm like, I need that sweet HBO content or whatever it was. Um, And now I'm watching like The Last of Us show. And it's a good show, but the streaming quality on Binge is garbage. The streaming quality... I'm looking at Pedro. Pedro Pascal looks like a potato. Potato Pascal. (laughs) Because <laughs> yeah. the quality is so bad. And I'm like, yeah. this is not 1080p. You can't tell me. No, yeah. It might be 1080p, but it's so compressed. compressed yeah. It's oh. like 50 megabyte file. They're just like, yeah. it's 1080p, bro, I swear. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Which, I mean, is another reason to invest in a Plex server because there you are can, much better yeah, you can buy it on quality 4K and upload yeah. it yourself <laughs> or there are much yeah there are much better file better files available out there wink wink nudge nudge yeah then like i'm paying 16 17 dollars a month so you can put, give me potato quality look we um we invest in HBO max we bought a gift card um off of a shadier part of the internet and just Signed up for HBO Max a while ago. Yeah. Before all the drama went down. Because if I knew what I knew now, we probably wouldn't have it, right? But when HBO Max was still a really good service, we subscribed. Mm. And it, and, H- and Last of Us through HBO Max looks amazing. Yeah. I'm like, why can't they offer us that? Yeah, I mean, I think... Then again, it's it's just contempt. I guess, it's I guess, contempt for the customer because they don't want us having binge. They want us having Foxtel. Yeah. Do we have to go to a break? Because I want to segue into the whole Netflix stuff. Yeah, we'll go We'll go to a quick break and then we'll All segue right. out of that. Yeah. We'll be right back after this. You're back on the Tuesday Review. Um, having a whinge about all the streaming, basically, this yeah. tonight. <laughs> so, I mean... It's a season for suffering, and that includes streaming. I, yeah, I, I, I know we... Com- I mean, we always complain about everything, but, I mean, uh, especially lately, we've been complaining about streaming, and especially Netflix. And, you know, Netflix, like, you know, on the old show and, er- you know, early on in Tuesday Review, like, we were big defenders of we Netflix. We championed because them. People kept saying Netflix sucks, all this stuff sucks. And I'm like, yes, a lot of it does, but there are a lot of great shows and movies and it was good to have stuff available in your home relatively cheaply um, and, you know, it's more it's more convenient. Um, in the years since, they've what, jacked up the price three to four times, yeah. deleted a lot of their shows, yeah. cancelled a lot of their shows. Can- they keep cancelling and... Just like the the app is still probably the best, except for maybe Disney Plus apps uh, app is pretty good. But uh, you know, every time I watch a Netflix show or movie, I'm like, you know what? Amazon Prime offers 4K standard. Uh, Stan offers 4K standard. Mm, no, you have to pay extra. Do you? Yeah, for Stan. Okay, I didn't know. I that. mean, he used our Stan. I pay the extra. Yeah, I, covered, that's baby. that's why I didn't know. That's why I didn't know. Okay, but um, Prime does. But um, Disney Plus has 4K standard, and Disney that's cheap. Plus, that's yeah. at the moment until they, I'm sure they'll jack up their price. But at the moment, that's still pretty cheap. Yeah, it's only like hundred. Um, at the moment, it's hundred and forty a year, mm. which still one of the cheapest. Services. Cheaper than yeah. Um, the only one cheaper is Amazon. That's yeah, like fifty bucks a year, and you get that's for packages anyway so yeah. <laughs> um it's only netflix still like not only do you have to get the more expensive tier to get 4k but you have to get the four screens which if you're someone like me who doesn't need the four what, screens but now they're making it even harder because it's that's four what screens but only in your house that's what that's at, what i was getting at at the moment so at the moment our uncle in tasmania has he uses our netflix account not a lot but he yeah. has it mm. 
And now because you got the, the four K four screens, yeah. And now we're gonna have to kick him off soon when Netflix turns around and says, "Sorry, one house that only." Otherwise, it's like a, what six bucks a month, yeah, extra house fee. Remember, remember when Netflix was becoming a thing and their whole uh, marketing campaign was, was lovers sharing a password. Yeah, they knew what people were doing. Yeah. Now they're getting to a point where they're you know greedy and they need to appease their shareholders uh, or whatever. And they're like, oh no, you can't share passwords anymore. If your if your login doesn't log into your home Wi-Fi IP address every thirty days or whatever, it'll get kicked off automatically. And they suspend your account. So yeah. So if you pay for the four screens or the two screens or whatever, you have to use them in the same house. I'm like, what's the point of that? What if you work abroad? What if you travel for yeah. work? What if? Yeah. And uh, they um they've ridiculous. temporarily suspended this move in America because too many people complained. Especially with America, they have like Hawaii and American Samoa and like mm. other places where maybe if you work in the army, you're not going to be. Yeah, what if you're deployed? Yeah. Um, and so they're like, all right, fair enough, not for America. But for the rest of the world, it's fine. We don't have the same issues. That's stupid. It's stupid. Like, what if you're on the road and at a hotel and they have a smart TV? You log into your Netflix so you can watch what you have saved. Yeah. They do it on uh, airplanes, like, bloody hell. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, like, why, <laughs> like, why remove a large part of. What makes that service a good thing? Yeah, exactly. Well, it's like, let's, it's happened a lot in other industries too. Like EA used to be the enemy of the industry. And since they've sort of turned it around a little bit lately. Um, but it's like Netflix is instead, they're doubling down and being like, no. Like we're cracking down on everything. And it's like, yeah, but you know, you're already on a losing foot. Mm. It's time the company realizes this and actually tries to make their customers empathetic towards them again. Like when EA was the worst company on the planet, yeah, they turned their image around a little bit. Mm. They're like, let's we're throwing EA Play in with Game Pass. We're, mm. um, you know, like we're releasing single player games at a relatively cheap price. We're doing I guess all this kind of until stuff until it not, affects their bottom line. Yeah, but it should it should have it, well that that's kind of that's kind of what I'm getting know? at yeah. is a lot of people are just going to straight up cancel when this password sharing comes. I think they're cocky. Yeah. Because they're, essentially their bottom line is being threatened and instead of being like, okay, we're going to offer a better service, hmm. they're turning around and saying, we're going to make it harder because we know you're not going to cancel. But I think that's a bet they're going to yeah, lose. Yeah, I, I think that we... And, and as consumers, we have to call their bluff because like with the Wizards of the Coast thing, which we talked about a few weeks ago, if everyone complains but then doesn't do anything, they'll just keep getting away with their bad behavior and you know anti-consumer tactics but if yeah people do start to cancel on mass especially man everything's so expensive bro yeah i don't know how we're stuck i don't know how we got here petrol's so expensive you know what i mean like, like i mean i know how we no, got here no i mean literally yeah. i don't know how you and me arrived at the oh, station oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like yeah we should have flipped we need to flip. yeah. soon we're gonna have to flintstone it yeah um but yeah i think this is kind of like what we're getting at um is like like having a Plex server, like making your own stream ser- streaming service, especially for someone like me who for, has for a physical it's collection. It. It's just like, yeah, it's I what? think eventually I'm just going to have to cancel all the streaming services, not just Netflix, and just be like, you know what? It's not worth subscribing Everything's for 12 so months of the year. Did you see in the news today mm. that Australia's largest or one of the largest cold refrigeration transport companies went bust? This company serviced Aldi, Coles, Woolies nationally. Okay. And so they reckon in the, in the next week or so, the price of refrigerated and frozen goods is going to skyrocket because there's no refrigerated trucks. Like the company went bust. Mm. The whole supply chain is affected. So well, And there's like no other company that can... Not right now. Jeez. So everything's going to get more expensive. Everything continues to get more expensive. My wages stay the same. Hmm. Um, yeah, that's the thing. So it's like I can't afford all these streaming services really anymore. I need this Plex server, but yeah. I have bills. To, like I'm just we have to save up for it. Yeah. but we'll get it eventually. But it's like right now, what we have: Disney, Stan, Paramount Plus, AMC Plus, mm. Shutter, Netflix. Netflix, Apple Plus, Amazon Prime, Netflix. How many streaming yeah. services? Yeah, it's insane. Like, yeah, I mean we uh, we've like, talked about it before. We, We've talked about this heaps of times, but it's like the market is extra saturated now and it's the cable problem. It's going to yeah, collapse we're, in we're on back itself. At, we're yeah. back at the beginning of the, the, the cable problem of like, yeah, it, it's not worth it anymore. And 
each streaming service has that one show you really want to watch. Yeah. And that's it. You and it's I mean? like you're subscribing just to watch that one. Like right now I have Stan only because I want to watch Poker Face and I yeah. want to watch Yellowstone. <laughs> yeah. And the spin-offs to Yellowstone aren't they're on, on Stan. They're on Paramount Plus. They're on Paramount Plus. <laughs> it's a gig in the balls And eventually, every time. I'm assuming, because of rights, eventually it's going to go off Stan and to Paramount Plus once their agreement finishes. So if you are subscribed to Stan to watch Yellowstone, at a certain point, it's like gonna, with Netflix, gonna, yeah, to things are going to start disappearing. Like with HBO Max, they're going to start deleting stuff to, for a tax break. Exactly. And it's also going to be interesting to see what happens recently with South Park. There's a whole yeah. drama going on with South Park right now because HBO uh, Warner Brothers paid an ungodly amount of money mm. to have specials made for their service. No, isn't, isn't Paramount Plus is the special? Yeah, but HBO also paid some money for it, right? To have access to certain seasons and okay. all this kind of stuff. And they haven't been delivering. So there was, the, it was the, a part the, sh- the actual seasons of the show are still on, on Comedy Par- Central, which is yeah, they're owned, on H- they're on by Binge and owned by HBO. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's but a, it's the, the, spe- the one-off specials are f- through Paramount Plus. It's very it's very complicated. But, There's a lot of legal. But now issues. you're saying that. But basically, what I read in the news recently with South Park was. Um, there's a spat. Warner Brothers sues Paramount in $740 million South Park spat. So basically, Warner Brothers paid Paramount or they paid for rights to seasons. It was like something like 10, 10 episode seasons. Hmm. And the recent seasons of South Park have only been six episodes. And basically, HBO is turning around saying, where's my content? Hmm. Well, you took, all, you took all our money, but you're not delivering. Hmm. Um, and it's going to get pretty ugly, and it's that's part of the issue where it's like you got you got two different companies basically arguing over uh, like licenses and rights issues, and it's like you're splitting the content. Yeah, that's it's weird, and it, yeah, it makes it so hard to so, like. This is off of um, ninenews.com.au. Uh, Warner Brothers Discovery has filed a lawsuit against Paramount claiming the media company has breached a $740 million contract with HBO Max by airing South Park on its own streaming platform, Paramount+. Plus. Jeez. So basically, Paramount is showing South Park, which it owns, but it also paid got paid $740 million by Warner Brothers to have exclusive access to South Park certain mm. ep- seasons or episodes or specials on HBO. Mm. So it's... Basically, the whole thing is a time bomb, and it's a nightmare. What a mess! And we're we're sing we're single handedly sitting here, uh, telling you we're watching slowly. It's like a car crash. Yeah, streaming at the moment is a car crash, which we're slowly watching. It's, we can't do. It's anything. so frustrating because like it was at streaming at first was so liberating, and now it feels yeah. so. Yeah, it's um, such a shame. It's yeah, it's very weird at the moment. The thing is, like, at, at, after all, you know, we just had that big long conversation and after all said and done, there's still so much great stuff on Netflix. There's still so much That's stuff That's why it's frustrating. On, yeah, there's yeah. still so much great stuff on Binge and, and Disney Plus and whatever. And it's just like, yeah, they keep cancelling stuff, but then they've got other great stuff. And yeah, they keep doing awful things, but the, they've also got some really cool things. It's like, yeah, it's so... It's just confusing. I don't know. We're in a cap- we're in a capitalistic nightmare. Um, yeah. Have you you've heard about this prime energy drink? No. So it's this new thing going around in the supermarkets. It's driving me crazy. Um, it's Logan Paul and KSI. Oh, you told me about this. Yeah. Every day we get kids ringing up, going, "Do you have Prime? Do you have Prime? Do you have Prime?" The answer is always no, no, no. Yeah. Not Amazon Prime, the energy no, drink. No, the energy drink Prime. Prime yeah. Or the hydration drink. They call it hydration drink, oh. but it has four times the amount of caffeine as Red Bull. Jeez. It's not an. It's not a hydration drink. It's not going to hydrate you. When that's you get dehydrate. If you get anything that's branded with Logan Paul, you know it's not going to be good no. for you. No. <laughs> anyway, kids are going to be really disappointed um, when we don't sell it for safety reasons. Yeah. If we do, it's going to be like, could you imagine the backlash when six-year-olds come in and buy a drink that has that's like four times the amount of caffeine as Red Bull yeah. from a supermarket? Coles, Woolies, Aldi, whoever sells that's it. That's also, because you were telling me about it off air like a couple of weeks ago. Like that's also like, because it's a meme drink now. Like, yeah. oh, the famous YouTube it's, guy sell, it's, has to sell me this. So, you know, 10-year-olds come in and like, oh my God, I have to get this. And then some some guy buys a hundred of them and sells them online for a thousand dollars 
and it's just like ridiculous. No, it's it's like I feel like I'm living in idiocracy. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. dude. Uh, when idiot got idiot. Okay, I mean, every time someone mentions idiocracy, people are like, oh my god, it's so real life. It's so you know, it's like a documentary, and then. You got all these other people come out and say, no, that's ridiculous. You're being silly, like, you know, whatever. And I'm like, but it's hard not to watch that movie and then look out the window and be like, I know. This is what's happening to us. Because, like, a few of the shops in the area sell this prime drink, yeah? Like, um, just milk bars and tobacconists and whatever else. Mm. But, uh, and they sell like 10 bucks a bottle. Mm. Like, it's an energy drink. But then, like, people are reselling them. That's the True. thing. I, I had. The other the other day, I had a kid come up to me, and I know it's a meme, so I almost started laughing at him before he said yeah. it. And he says, is the manager here? And it's a meme on TikTok, where if you go over to uh, a supermarket store manager and you say, prime me up, it's like a secret handshake, and they'll give uh, you a bottle of prime. Okay. And he's kid, <laughs> no, I'm serious. This like little boy walked up to me, and he's like, is the store manager here? And I'm like, no. And he's like, do you have prime? I'm like, no. And he walked away. I'm like, 100%, he would have... Done the, do, done the magic, and it would have been like, prime me up, looking shifty around the store. Yeah, like no, there's no secret handshake to get you like ten dollar bottle of energy. It's poison. Get out of here. Yeah, that's what I want to say. It's so, I, I guess I mean w- this episode is a complete, <laughs> uh, you know, mishmash of just anything because Calm's not here. We didn't want to talk just, about any specific <laughs> movies or whatever. Yeah. Um, but the like, it's I've been thinking about it. it's such an interesting time of like technology and the way you know tiktok and stuff i don't even understand and i'm not that old but even me i'm like i don't get this stuff i don't get twitch streaming i don't get this you know and there's a whole generation of kids like growing up with it and i'm not being like an old buddy day like oh kids these days i'm just i'm just interested in seeing the world the way they see it um because i don't really understand it completely and i and Look, silent producer Christian Sia, he's all into the TikToks. So maybe off the air, we have to explain it to us. Sit <laughs> yeah. us down. He won't. He's silent, so he won't appear on here. Yeah. But we'll get him to... <laughs> yeah. Off air, we'll get him to explain us yeah. the TikTok. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, you know, I kind of get it, but I also yeah. don't get it. I mean, Vines were kind of like the original TikTok. Yeah. And then that died. Um, you know, that know. that walked so TikTok could run. Just, just but also TikTok, like China is spying on you or whatever. So... No one cares. That's but the that's other thing. thing. We're this yeah. close to World War Three. No one cares. Yeah, that's the thing. Is like we we kind of there's no privacy anymore, and we love it. Yeah. There's no. I don't know. I don't know. The only the only thing I don't care is let Google have my information because I don't want to pay hundred dollars a month for a map service. I'll take that on the nose. You know what I mean? What do Google you mean? Maps. Remember Satnav? Yeah. Back in the day, it was like $100 a month for a premium Oh, sat-nav. subscription. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they were like $1,000 yeah. for a unit, and yeah, now it's in yeah. our pocket. Sure, Google knows where I'm going, but they know that anyway. Um, oh, okay, like, yeah. I'd, I'll, I'll accept the invasion of my oh, privacy I understand what you're for saying. Google Maps. Just so you can use the... Yeah, okay, I Because otherwise, we'd be priced out of the market, yeah, let's be yeah, honest. Yeah, yeah. But um, it's, it's... I don't know, That's man. the thing is... Maybe people, we're just in a People weird... will give up their freedoms for convenience. And I completely understand that because I just don't want to waste time on anything anymore. But it is scary and it it could get to a point where... It is scary. And maybe we're just in a weird mood today. But It's definitely a weird day and a weird week. It is a weird week. As I said, it's a season for suffering. We yeah. were talking about our problems of fans. It's, yeah. You know, we're, we're in a struggle we're, street right yeah. now. But... Um, I feel like everything's just in a bad way. Like everything is super capitalistic. Oh, and we've uh, always lived in a, a capitalist I mean, society, but it's considering like, we're already discussing it, might as well go full into it. But yeah, we're at a we're at a uh, you know, it's at a final breaking point now, I think, where this like kind of late stage capitalism is finally reached boiling yeah. point where yes, it's been awful for the last 100 years, but I think it's hit a point now where it's like you, we, well, this is not sustainable. This can't last much longer. No, like we're at a point. It's like you look at people like there's like 400 people applying for every rental property. It's like it's just whoever can spend the most will get the property. People are left homeless. Like, yeah, and you we're got right close to World War Three with Ukraine and Russia and yeah. India and China and all those kinds of issues. Yeah, it's like everything's super expensive. Like it was say yeah. Like everything's everything's going, but all these companies making, going bust. Yeah, we're making more money 
than we ever have before. But the buying power of it is useless. And you look at, you look at the front page today and they're most concerned with millionaires cracking their shits because they're going to get taxed a little bit more on their $3 million they have sitting oh, yeah. in their super fund. Yeah. Who cares? No, yeah. If you've got $3 million sitting in your super, I'm sure you're not going to notice when you get taxed. How much do you have in your current bank accounts if you have $3 if you're million making in that, super? Yeah, if you're making that yeah. much money to get the super rich tax or whatever. You're probably already worth a yeah, couple hundred million. Yeah. You know what I mean? I mean, it's, yeah, hashtag tax the rich, hashtag eat the rich. But uh, yeah, it, it's it's just ridiculous that, yeah, our, our, our priorities are wrong. People complaining about things you know gender politics and whatever and in the meantime the, the real problem dying, yeah. the real problem is the rich guy's got his hand in your pocket i think a lot of the issues yeah we're we're over here fighting over table scraps you know yeah. crumbs that have fallen on yeah. the floor exactly while these I, you know rich corporations well, like laugh not all to the mention way climate they, change the world is literally yeah. and that, that's the thing i think that's why it's reached this point where it's like if climate change didn't exist this kind of capitalistic side would probably limp on for a while, but I think we're at a breaking point. Like the the uh, the world is on fire. Yeah. Like we don't have time to. No, and like honestly, it's like, and this is the left's problem as well. We talked about this on Saturday shows and off air quite a lot, but we're too concerned with. I was talking about this with our friend of the show Jake once uh, in the last couple of days, and I'm like. The problem with the left versus the right at the moment is the right or the conservatives or the ultra right, they're always unified. They've always been yeah. We've a talked team. about it. Yeah, they're always been a team and they're always focused because with the like the they're problem, in it for the money and yeah. that's everything else is gravy. The problem with right wing people or whatever is that they don't actually have their only goal is to hurt the left, the other side, and earn and earn and, loads yeah, of cash. Yeah, so. It doesn't actually matter what they're doing or why they're doing it. Even if they all hate each other and they all disagree. They're, they're a unified goal, team. Yeah, they're all, yeah, their goal is, at the end of the day, all the same. Whereas, yeah, we've talked about like how like people on the left are sh- still struggling to figure out what our unified goal should be. Should it be Look, back in sh- the day, trans rights? Should yeah. it be climate change? Should it be... But this is know, a modern problem. Like The Labor Party didn't used to have this problem. You know what I mean? It was Medicare. I've, it was like... Yeah. Even now, up to Kevin I, Rudd, they didn't really have this I issue. Should, yeah, I should mention that all those issues that the left is fighting for, and I would consider myself a leftist, even though those, again, those are just na- labels that like, it just all depends on like what's the best thing. The best things always just happen to be on the left because yeah. the right wing are evil. But, you know, trans, trans rights are important, you know? Gender politics is important. Uh, political correctness... It yeah. can be important, but so is climate change. So is other. But yeah, it's priorities, and we're we're kind of arguing over what what priorities, what words to use. Meanwhile, the right is just screaming and throwing their shit, and and they're, they're being extremely effective and they're being <laughs> successful. Yeah. I think so that's, I think, that's the yeah. problem is like the, you know, like Labour and the Greens are too busy. We're too busy arguing amongst each we other should, to present yeah. a united front. I think we talked about this maybe a few months ago, whatever. And that, it kind maybe of adds to the malaise, you know what I mean? Everything's falling oh, apart yeah. around me and nobody really cares oh, because... Yeah, look, it's, it's hard to care when everyone else doesn't yeah. care or can't see the forest through the trees. But uh, yeah. uh, we did talk about how... I Because I, this is something that really gets my goat is the whole both sides are the same. I always argue with people, yeah, labor might be shit sometimes, but never, ever let people... Yeah use that argument because that's a right-wing talking point they want you to say both sides are the same same so you ignore all the problems and you don't do anything about it so there's that but there's also the fact that i mean if we're really going to get into nitty-gritty and we don't have a lot of time we're just like killing time now you know but if we're getting nitty-gritty of it it's like using labor as an example it's like there's center left at the most, at, yeah, at best, yeah. So it's like you, we want if you know if we want real change. Look, we need uh, to go personally f- in in the studio. We voted for the Victorian if, Socialists. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Is <laughs> yeah. we need to go further left. The problem with the world, but I'll use Australia because that's where we are, is like 
you know, the Liberal Party, the Coalition, whatever, the right-wing media, you know, Murdoch and all that, they're slowly pulling us as, to the right. And they've been extremely successful and with it for And they've been successful. And I'm like, what we need is pull it all the way back to the left. And Labor is still too centrist because they're trying to appease both sides. Um, See, our problem is Victoria doesn't have any good left newspaper or media. I don't think anywhere in Australia does. You can get... Mainstream. You can get... There's like one paper in New South Wales and Sydney and stuff. Yeah, but New South Wales is overwhelmingly conservative. Yeah, but they have one lefty paper, I'm mm. pretty sure. They have, like, it's at The Guardian or something like that. That's pretty I don't weird. know. Anyway, um, I don't know. If you want to see what real oh, news Oh, we didn't is, even talk about Friendly George yeah, getting I was right half, about to half house fireball. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to say, yeah. This episode's <laughs> crazy. I was, right, so I was right about to say. I was like, look, if you if someone tells you both sides are the same, tell them to watch Friendly Geordies. Yeah, and now he is a Labor <laughs> shield. Don't get me wrong. But definitely, like... I would vote for Labor every day, forever, a million times before even considering of voting for any of these right-wing asshole coalition parties. 100%. And look, we're sure we'd get ourselves into legal trouble by even mentioning half the stuff that Jordan Shanks gets into. Oh, yeah. I don't want to get my house firebombed. <laughs> no, but go watch his YouTube channel. Yeah. <laughs> He's had some pretty spicy videos lately. Um, oh yeah, he's killing. Uh, he's uh, he's, he's going to get himself into trouble soon. Yeah, I mean he already has. <laughs> yeah, I mean he's trouble. been sued multiple times. They've you know, but uh, uh, yeah, I think I said I said to Nathan, uh, I think it's it's a sad it's a sad thing that you know it says a lot about us that he's Australia's best journalist and he's basically just a YouTube a YouTube like shit post a troll shit post yeah. troll yeah, which actually is something. This episode's going off the rails. It's something I've actually talked about with the boys before off here is like one thing the right does well, which we're just talking about, is that they're just flinging their shit. They're just like ah, screaming, yeah, carrying like the, on and getting their way. Just the whole Barilaro saga, the whole Braz saga yeah. is just... No. He, he, his second last video, second latest release video, just re, basically recaps the entire Braz saga, right? It's amazing. It should be a movie. No, just, no, but yeah, what like I'm a, saying a gangster is, film. yeah, what 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 they're doing on the right is just ha- throwing a t- tantrum and getting their way, and oftentimes they their part of their ammunition is the whole both sides are the same. Everything's a joke. Everything's a meme. Pepe the Frog, ha ha, four chan, eight chan, QAnon. It's all yeah, nothing, nothing matters, kind of thing. And I think that's what, one of the reasons they're so successful, you know, and even how Trump got elected is because no one takes them seriously until it's too late. Exactly. And they have this ability to empower, you know, the Alex Joneses of the world, for argument's sake, to just scream and shout and make millions of dollars and spread dangerous, hateful messages. What I like, what what I like about Friendly Geordies, he's basically a right wing troll, but for the left. <laughs> yeah. Like we well, no, need no, people but, like that who are like but, screaming and carrying on a, and making stupid jokes, a, but are doing it for the right reasons I for mean, doing but it. There's for a slight good. difference with Friendly Geordies, though, is that he makes jokes, but everything he says is true. <laughs> no, exactly. Yeah. yeah. But he's also like someone who's like, <laughs> yeah. And usually that would be like some right wing douchebag who's spreading a racist, hateful it's message. Like, what's the, but what's the things in Harry Potter? The Boggets, where it's like if you make fun of it, it doesn't have as much power. Oh, and it's that's the kind of thing that he does. Yeah. Right? He makes the jokes, and but he informs people, and it sort of takes away some of, yeah, the, I guess the power of, yeah. And he also, I guess, he also makes it um, more pal- palatable to a younger audience who would be yeah. susceptible to a right wing message. A lot of six year old, sixteen year old boys who are, you know, angry and alone and confused get radicalized by these right-wing psychos oh, yeah. by saying, oh, you have to be a man, well, they, you have to da 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 We're running out of time, but what are we calling like the Andrew Tate generation? Yes. Like that the whole yeah. thing. And like a friendly, if friendly, if someone like Friendly Geordies, I mean, he's not without his faults. I'm just saying in this example. Just generally. If he can capture that audience before an Andrew Tate type, you know, a, a Jordan Peterson type could latch, you know, could capture that audience i'd say that we're in better hands 100%. with this ski, skinny and he, and he's skinny made youtube he's made comedian K-Rod, man. 
Man. That's all I have to say. We have to say. Australia's <laughs> best prime minister. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. This episode was nuts. Um, we had a good time, though. But, well, yeah, we had a good time. Half of it probably didn't make sense. Um, yeah, we had no plan for this. We were just like, well, Calm's not here. We don't really want to start talking about movies because then next week he's going to he's gonna be out of the loop <laughs> and he's going to want to talk about the movies we watch. So we're like, oh, yeah, we'll just start talking and see where we go. And this is where we ended up. So, I mean, it's like one of our off-air conversations, really. We start talking about movies and we end up with Eat the Rich. Yeah. Well, it's an important standard, message. Kind I mean, of, kind of st- standard talk. Yeah. Well, I reckon that's all we've got for tonight, guys. Yeah, yeah, we'll wrap it up. Thanks for listening, everyone. Please like and share the Tuesday Review Facebook Hope page. you lasted this long. If you lasted this long, <laughs> congratulations. <laughs> you win a special award. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're a real one. Um, please like and share the Tuesday Review Facebook page and the socials at Tuesday Review AU. Yeah. Instagram, um, Twitter. And Facebook. Yeah, you already yeah, said Facebook. Facebook. But you yeah. you always say Facebook, but you never, you never say... Instagram and Twitter. Instagram and yeah. Twitter. Uh, thanks for listening, everyone. We'll be back next week. Adios, cousins.